بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ما ولا أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Today's session, our final session, we're going to be talking about something that is vitally important, and that is intentions, the niya. When people go for Hajj, something that I've noticed is that a lot of people, they arrive at Hajj, they do the rituals, they get stressed out, and then towards the end, when they're sitting in the tents, they ask a question, and that question is this, what am I doing here? And it's like this deep question right at the end, what am I doing here? And it's a great question. The problem is, why are you asking this at the end of Hajj? You should be asking this question at the beginning of Hajj. Why am I going for the Hajj journey in the first place? And so if you knew exactly why are you going for the Hajj journey right from the beginning, it's like getting into your car. If you knew exactly where you're going to drive to, then you could immediately drive there. And if you got blocked, you can take a left, right. You know how to get to your destination because you know exactly where you're going. However, if you get into your car and what am I doing here? Where am I driving to? What's my destination? You don't know what's going to happen when you get into your car. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to be bored. You're going to be confused. And that's exactly what happens to a lot of people when they go for Hajj. They don't have a destination. They don't know why they're there ultimately. And so they just get bored and confused and they waste valuable time. So inshallah ta'ala today I'm going to go with you step by step and being very clear about what your intention should be and could be for your Hajj journey inshallah ta'ala. So let me ask you this question. Why are you going for Hajj? Why are you going for Hajj? The typical answer, and this is an example, someone would say, my niya, my intention to go for Hajj is so that I can have an accepted Hajj. That sounds great, but it's very vague. You want an accepted Hajj. Okay, great. How will you know if it's accepted? How will you know if it's not accepted? That's even people who go with that intention, I want an accepted Hajj. They find themselves at the end of Hajj, they did everything wrong. They got angry, they got into fights, and then they're like, Sheikh, how, how will I know if my Hajj is accepted or not? This is something that you have to be clear of in the beginning. If you want your Hajj to be accepted, then your intention should be, this is what I'm specifically going to do when I go for Hajj, so that it can be accepted inshallah ta'ala. So let's go through that again, this conversation back and forth of what your intention should be or what your goal is for your Hajj. So I ask you, why do you want to go for Hajj and what are you aiming to achieve out of your Hajj? You might respond by saying, I want to have an accepted Hajj. Okay, great. You want to have an accepted Hajj. What do you have to do in your Hajj in order for it to be accepted? So you'll say something like, well, I have to memorize the steps of Hajj, okay, so that you're not stressed out and confused. Memorize the steps of Hajj, and I have to do it exactly like the Prophet ﷺ, and do it sincerely for the sake of Allah. Okay, that's great. You're on a roll. You're getting a little bit more specific, memorizing the steps, doing it like the Prophet ﷺ did, doing it sincerely for the sake of Allah. That's great. Now, what do you need to stay away from in order for your Hajj to be accepted? And so if you look in the Qur'an, you'd say, for example, well, Allah says I should stay away from um, rafath, which is like intercourse and things leading to it. I should stay away from fusuq, which is like sin, um, disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the hajj, transgression. And I should stay away from jidal. So these are three things. Jidal meaning argumentation. And believe me, a lot of people argue with each other during hajj. These are three things that a person should stay away from. Okay, great. Now, is your destination and your intention a little bit more clear for your Hajj? Is it or not? And you'd say, yes, it's a little bit more clear. Okay, great. So this is what we have so far. I will memorize the steps of Hajj, doing it exactly like the Prophet ﷺ did it, sincerely for the sake of Allah, avoiding intercourse, sin, and argumentation. How does that sound? That's a little bit more specific, correct? So now the person who says this and knows this when they go for Hajj, inshallah ta'ala, they'll be more on target in what they're doing in that Hajj. Now, I want you to do this for yourself. I've just given you an example of what your intention could be, and I'm not telling you to copy it. What I want you to do is really think of it for yourself. What is your intention for Hajj? And then when you write down, why are you going for Hajj? What are you trying to achieve? What's this all about for you? What I want you to do is after you write something down, even if it's vague, write down what do you specifically want? So you write something down, what specifically do you want to get out of your Hajj? 
after you write that down, is what you've written, is it measurable? So if someone, for example, says, I want my Hajj to be accepted, okay, can you measure acceptance or not? Can you measure it? And the person will say, well, how will you know if it's accepted or not? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only knows if it's accepted or not. One way to measure it is saying that after I return back from Hajj, I will come closer to Allah with good deeds, good deeds that I didn't perform before I went for Hajj. So that's measurable. You can see, are you now praying in the Masjid more often? Are you doing more Sadaqah? Are you fasting more often? And so on and so forth. You can measure that. Is it actionable? Actionable meaning, are, is your goal for Hajj, is it something vague and just like out in the air? Or is it something specific that you can do? So in the example that I gave, I said, I'll go for Hajj and my goal is an accepted Hajj that has no sin and has no argumentation. So I can act upon that. If someone's about to get into a fight with me during Hajj, I'll realize that my goal in this Hajj is not to get into fights with people. Right? So it's actionable. Is it realistic? In, in the destination that I gave, I said that, you know, doing it exactly like the Prophet ﷺ did it. Now, is that realistic? And you might actually say, well, can we do it exactly like the Prophet ﷺ? We can do it as much as we can, but no doubt we'll make mistakes. We're human beings. All human beings make mistakes. So maybe we want to add a part to our goal that says that we'll do it as much as possible like the Prophet ﷺ. And if we make a mistake, we will hasten to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's an awesome addition to the intention. So that it's realistic and it's something that you can do and you know exactly what you're going for. To sum it all up in the assignment, what I want you to do is ask yourself this question. What are you trying to achieve out of the Hajj? Right? And just answer it directly, what are you trying to achieve out of the Hajj? Step number two is whatever you write down, I want you to put it through the four uh, filters. I want you to put it through, is your destination and goal in Hajj, is it specific? Is it measurable? Is it actionable? Is it actionable and is it realistic? And after asking each of those questions, make your own intention and write down what this Hajj is about for yourself, inshaAllah ta'ala. After that, after you get this paragraph or so, what I want you to do is read it like 75 times. And if you want to read it like 700 or 7,000, whatever you want to read it, as many times as you want, that's great. I want it to be in your heart, in your mind, that you know exactly what you're going for Hajj for. So that when you go for Hajj, you're on a mission, and you know exactly what you're doing, inshaAllah ta'ala. And imagine if not only you had this mission of what you're here for Hajj for, but everybody that was with you in your Hajj group, and all the Hajjis had their intentions clear and straightforward, they would be hitting the ground running, and they would be going directly for the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it's not going to be them, then let it be you, inshaAllah ta'ala. Read this intention again and again and again, the complete intention so that you know exactly why you're going for Hajj, inshaAllah ta'ala. This is our last session before Hajj. I wish you an accepted Hajj, inshaAllah ta'ala. And as a final note, I'm going to give you like a little bonus here. But as a final note, I wanted you to, inshaAllah ta'ala, include me and my family in your long dua list, inshaAllah ta'ala for Hajj. The bonus for today is something that I wrote because this question comes up when people go for Hajj, what am I doing here, they're bored, what do they do next and so on and so forth. Because there's going to be a lot of time in Hajj where you're just sitting around. So what I did one year is I made a list and there's a link inshallah ta'ala that you can read my list but I'd rather you make your own list. It was a um, something that I read in the Reader's Digest, it was like 50 things to do before you die. So I said forget before I die. I put 50 things that I wanted to do in Hajj. And I made like this dream list of good deeds and fun things to do during Hajj. Such as, you know, handing out tea to random Hajjis passing by. Or, for example, climbing up this mountain and taking pictures or whatever it was. And you can take a look at my list, inshallah ta'ala. What I want you to do is make a list of 50 things that you would like to do in Hajj, inshallah ta'ala. Make this list. And then when you go for Hajj, Try to knock out as many of these things on your list as you can, inshallah ta'ala. When everybody else is stressed out and confused and getting sick and all of that stuff, you'll have your list and you have your intentions and you'll be going straight forward 
for exactly what you came for, inshallah ta'ala. And bi by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will return from Hajj with the feeling that this is the most sweetest journey that you've ever taken in your life, inshallah ta'ala. And I hope and pray that it's so sweet and so enjoyable for you that year after year after year for the coming years, inshallah ta'ala, you will love to return again and again for Hajj, inshallah ta'ala. With best wishes to see you have an accepted Hajj, inshallah ta'ala. This is Muhammad al-Sharif for Hajj Coach. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.